Um, all the your your highness, the, the king who is here, and uh, very senior Nigerians who are here in no particular order, members of my delegation. Good evening to you all. First of all, I bring you all uh, greetings and warm felicitations from my state, the greatest state in Nigeria. Greatest state of Bayansa. Greatest for a lot of reasons. Uh, the state that gave Nigeria the first oil well, and uh, the state that uh, gave a president that handed over peacefully. <laughs> the state that I believe has more potentials, more prospects, more uh, good things. We say in Bayelsa that uh, all good things start from Bayelsa, and uh, most importantly, that all good human beings, including you all, um, first of all, are from Bayelsa. <laughs> Ambassador Laro, thank you very much uh, for this honor. I just came in for some good engagements, and I was told that uh, uh, you had graciously offered to host me, members of my delegation. I believe since I left home, this may be one of the few occasions I'll be tasting real Nigerian uh, dish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm Looking forward. Eagerly looking forward to it. <laughs> I know and trust and believe that uh, your wife uh, is more than capable. She's the boss. Um, just before I stepped out for this function, I, I checked the dictionary and discovered there's a word that's missing. Ambassador. The wife of an ambassador. I think we should have a special name for the wife. Um, I think the word for an ambassador's wife should be ambassadoress. <laughs> <laughs> <Shall I? laughs> I didn't see it, but I'm adding it from my alpha. <laughs> One of the reasons we are the greatest thing. <laughs> well, my dear friends, uh, brothers and sisters, I might do, I just saw my sister. Uh, that, that's it. By herself for some time. She ran away from home. <laughs> she actually campaigned against me <laughs> in the last governorship elections. But uh, she ran away, and I'm happy. Ambassador Laro, you have given me an opportunity for me to see her, and I'm happy seeing her. Uh, but I made sure that they were all defeated. <laughs> I'm, I'm not defeated. I'm not defeated. Uh, thank you very much. Well, um, as you know, we have a great nation to build back home. And each time I travel out and I have an opportunity to interact with our people, I am reminded again and again about the possibilities that we have. You are not just ordinary people. Anybody seen you knows that people like you can only come from one place, Nigeria. The spirit I see in you all, the energy, you don't see it in people from other places, even in the African continent. Uh, but we are also a nation of challenges, a nation of problems and issues. Some of them you are all aware of. And by the way, let me add quickly that there's no nation at all on the face of the earth that doesn't have issues. Uh, this is where you all come, not just those of us who are back home, but those of us who are holding positions uh, in government. All of us share a common duty. Those of you in the diaspora and those of us back home, to work together so that we can build a better, more stable, more prosperous Nigeria. Because if Africa must rise, Nigeria, first of all, has to rise. Yes. First of all. 
And in all interactions I've had, that's the central theme, the theme of optimism, a theme of consciousness of challenges and issues. But then, knowing that we've got a great nation and a great future to build together. That's what I've been uh, communicating in the brief interactions I had in Washington uh, as a guest of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And also in the interactions I shall have tomorrow and the day after. And I will be returning to our beloved country. But I will also stop over in Germany for a short uh, address at the German Nigerian Business Forum where I will be speaking. These are the issues those of you who are here need to know that back home you have a crop of people who are conscious, who are aware of their duty and responsibility um, to work with all of you to make our country better. Challenges are enormous back home. Economic issues, issues of politics, issues sometimes even of uh, criminality and violence and terror. And just as I made a call in, in Washington, I call for greater, even international collaboration. You know, our president came to the UN and made a case for support, the fight against corruption, for the fight against terror. And that's our position. All of us support that. We respect our political views. But next year, moving forward, 2019 is also another very interesting period the life of our nation. And I uh, call on all of you to continue to pray for our country. Already, from the outcome of the elections, 20, uh, last, last, last time, 2015, where for the first time, power was transferred peacefully. Uh, not just a peaceful transfer from one person to the other, but a peaceful transfer from one party to the other, the first time in our political history. So we have already crossed a major, major hurdle, major threshold. And in our sub-region, only Ghana has successfully done that before. But it's only when Nigeria arrives, as I said earlier, that you can say Africa. So we all need to build on that. Um, our country right now is going through the worst recession. The last, uh, the worst we have known in the past 25, 30 years. And for those of us who are managing public authority and public resources, the past three, four years have been very, very challenging. Very, very challenging. And even coming from a state that a number of you and a number of people will consider to be rich. And by the way, it's very rich. My state is very rich. We don't just say we are the greatest state for nothing. We have more gas and oil reserves in Bayelsa than you have in any other state. And so with even what we receive, it's tough, very tough, because of the historical issues of the problems in the civil service, fraud in the payrolls, in our own case, the challenge of terrain, and all has been very tough. So I call on all of you who are here to join hands with your various leaders, state governors, uh, and support the economic development of our people. Very often, the, in this conversation about politics, the real economic issues get lost. The issues as to how we can put bread, or in our case, gari, on the table, get lost. And a lot of people talk about issues of sentiment. And who cares the, the God you worship? Who cares the part of Nigeria you come from? Who cares 
who you call yourself. All we know is that we have a nation together which we are common and equal citizens. And that we are facing real life challenges as to how our children get better education. Well, because the educational system has collapsed. You see more and more people fleeing our country. Young people now even go into neighboring nations. I don't want to call them by name. And those are countries that in the 70s and even up to the 80s, they were all coming, go to school, to work, and some were even saying, go away, to the extent that we associate them with some bags. <laughs> So we have a lot of these very important challenges. And yet, because of the historical issues, a lot of people engage in behavior, in conduct, and in speech. That is divisive, that does not add value to the human condition. I believe we are in all of this together to advance the human condition. So that's part of why I'm here, Ambassador. Uh, tomorrow I'll be leaving for Louisville uh, to sign a cooperation agreement between the university there and the University of Africa that my government has built. Building schools, building universities, building hospitals. Now, because of the work we have been doing, even in these challenging times, I believe my sister should have a fair idea of what we are saying, that um, we have the best public schools in Nigeria now in Bayelsa. The best public schools. And it's actually a revolution going on there. Not only are we building the schools, we are supplying everything the children need there giving them books free, or giving them even school uniforms free. And most importantly, we are even feeding them free. I believe my sister is following development back home, especially the John National Academy, which is in our own local government headquarters, Kayama. <laughs> It has started with 1,000 students, boys and girls, fed, maintained, clothed, books provided for by the government of Bayelsa City. It's part of the educational um, emergency I declared 2012 when I took over. There was no single boarding school in my state. No single boarding school before I took over. Now we have 15 model schools. Each with a capacity for a minimum of 600. With the John National Academy. If you Google now, you see it. General Gohan came last two months to commission it. And Nobel laureate Woloshenka and other literary icon, J.P. Clark, and all others were there to help me inspire these young, young minds. That's the kind of revolution going on in my state. We're building constituency for the schools to bring them close to the people. And because of the shared number of these qualified young ones that will be coming out, we're building a university. Appropriately called the University of Africa. So, the foundation school has started. We have over 500 students there. who will be graduating to the degree program this year. And that's what has brought me uh, to talk to American universities for support and collaboration. And I will be, Ambassador, don't get tired, I will be coming in and out. I'm not used to traveling, much, but this is a worthy course to pursue, and I intend to build the right partnerships for, for that institution and for other institutions before I leave. And we are also doing the same for healthcare. Every local government in my state now has modern hospital that will build minimum of uh, 880 beds, including how local government of Kayama. <laughs> I'm saying this so that people who are here should know what is happening back home. Back home. 
and key into it. Key into it. So I want to thank you all uh, for the great work you are all doing. Uh, you are all great ambassadors of our of our country, and uh, for the investments we are making in the field of education and healthcare, especially. We are looking for collaboration. Somebody has, or you know, an institution, organization that donates computers. The children back home that we are building need them. We need people who donate books, hospital equipment. These are some of the interactions uh, from here uh, to have. Because the results are already showing. And what we are doing with public power and resources is clear to see. When I took over, it was, my estate was, WIAC ranking was 28. Last year, it was number 6. Wow. And this year, the rating that I just been released, number 5. Wow. The NECO rating used to be the worst. We were almost 30. Around that 2020 2012. Now, the last NECO rating released just three weeks ago, we are number three. Wow. So, that's the kind of work that has been going on. Uh, you don't need to get everybody to be in. There are still people who say no, you know, when you're doing everything. Uh -huh. A lot of back home, there's a lot of battle politics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think it's everywhere. You have a lot of it also here. That's right. Huh? That's right. Uh, so, Ambassador, I thank you. But I want to thank you all, most uh, especially for uh, coming at this short notice to honor me and members of my delegation. And um, once again, my very special thanks and appreciation, not to Ambassador this time, but to the Ambassadors. <laughs> thank you and God bless you all.